Welcome to another video in this series on film scoring. In our last video, we covered the first steps of starting a new project. We discussed big picture thinking, understanding the story that you need to help tell, and jotting down your first impressions for the music. In this video, we're going to start getting more specific. We'll learn how to break down a movie into specific scenes, how to figure out what kind of music you need to write, and even how to create your initial cue list of all the music that the story requires. Before we get started, I do want to take a quick moment to thank my wonderful patrons whose support makes videos like this one possible. I appreciate each and every one of you and am grateful to have you as part of the Patreon community. If you're interested in showing your support by joining Patreon, you can find the link in the description of this video. So with that, let's get started. So hopefully by now you have selected one of the three short films provided in last week's video and have had a chance to take notes on your first impressions. The next step is to create a master list of every scene in the film. This list is important because it will provide a map of how the story develops over time, which will inform how your music must also develop. Typically, in a professional setting, you'd be able to work closely with your director to develop this list and get a better understanding of exactly where they want music in their film. However, as mentioned last week, this isn't always an option when you're just starting out. As such, it's important to have an understanding of how you can do this by yourself. Scenes are one of the most basic building blocks of a story. They are short segments of the film where the primary character or characters of the scene try to accomplish a short-term goal. Whether or not they succeed in accomplishing this goal depends on the script. But regardless, the outcome of their actions helps propel the story forward. While making our master list of every scene in the film, we'll want to have a way of marking when each scene starts and ends. Most typically, this is where SMPTE codes come in. SMPTE stands for the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. And SMPTE code is a synchronization tool that allows anyone working on the film to identify each individual frame of the entire movie. This standard allows for frame-accurate referencing between collaborators like the film's editors, the composer, sound engineers, etc. The most common type measures time in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And this is the type of SMPTE that each of our short films utilize. While creating your master list, make sure to number each scene according to the order in which they occur during the film. Then, make note of the SMPTE codes for when each scene starts and ends, as well as brief answers to each of the following questions. What do the primary characters of this scene want? What is their plan to accomplish this? What conflict takes place in this scene? How does the scene end? For example, this is how our scene list could look for the first three scenes of Danny and the Wild Bunch. Scene 1. Sympty in, first hour, zero minutes, zero seconds, zero frames. Sympty out, first hour, zero minutes, 17 seconds, four frames. Scene details, opening credits. Scene 2. Sympty in, first hour, zero minutes, 17 seconds, five frames. Sympty out, first hour, one minute, 44 seconds, 17 frames. Danny and Miranda both want to improve the story so that it can be published. Danny wants to add more adventures that keep to the story's fun and childlike nature, while Miranda wants to make it darker so that it appeals to more publishing companies. Conflict rises due to their different ideas of how the story should be edited. The scene ends with Miranda reminding Danny that she's ultimately in charge and has final say over how she changes the story. Scene 3. First hour, 1 minute, 44 seconds, 18 frames. Sympty out, first hour, 2 minutes, 37 seconds, 19 frames. Miranda wants to edit the story and make it darker. She takes out a red marker and starts making changes to the book. Conflict rises as the changes she makes begin to cause a painful transformation to Danny. 
The scene ends when Danny's transformation causes him to knock over a mug, leading Miranda to stop editing. Take your time as you create your own list. Remember that this will be an important map that you will reference when deciding where music is needed in your film. Once you've finished going through your movie scene by scene, you should have a much more intimate and detailed understanding of how the story develops and progresses. With this information in mind, you can start thinking more carefully about what role the music will play in the film. Start by revisiting the scene list and making some notes on which scenes do and do not need music. Again, this is something you would ideally discuss with the director to learn their vision for the music. However, in a pinch, here are a few reasons why you might consider avoiding music in a particular scene. 1. There's a lot of dialogue that the music might distract from. 2. There are lots of important or loud sound effects, and the music might make it sound too busy. 3. The scene just isn't all that emotional and doesn't need any music to help support it. 4. The scene is especially emotional and doesn't need music to help support it. 5. Increasing the realism of the scene by not including music. Now, for the scenes that do need music, make sure to make a short note of why. Does it need to emphasize a particular emotion? Does it need to help establish a location in the music through regional sounds or instruments? Or does it need to help reference a scene from earlier by using a particular motivic idea? Once you've marked whether or not each scene requires music, make a special note of which scene you think will require the biggest music, and which one will require the most intimate music. Also, make special note of where the climax of the entire film takes place. This is often where the biggest and most energetic music needs to go, but not always. As usual, make sure to include a brief reason why. Next, it's time to start thinking about what your music needs to accomplish in the film. Think about the story that you have, by now, gotten so familiar with. What are the most important literary themes in the film? What lessons did the main characters need to learn? What emotions were the most important or explored the deepest in the film? Which characters were most important to the driving action of the story? These ideas are all excellent starting points for figuring out what emotions or ideas need to be at the core of your music. Once you've figured these out, consider how you want to organize your music in general. In other words, how do you want to actually use the thematic material throughout the story? Maybe you want to take a motivic approach and write different themes for the most important characters or emotions or literary themes of the film, and then you can introduce each motif with the initial appearance of their corresponding characters or ideas. Then you just adjust and reuse each theme as the character or ideas develop and return throughout the film. Another common approach is the integrated theme approach where a single primary theme is written to capture the whole spirit of the film. That theme is then reused and rewritten to fit whatever emotional setting is most needed in a case-by-case -case scenario. Other themes or ideas might also be used, but none of which will be as important as the primary theme. This approach is a little rarer in modern days, but one popular example would be Alan Silvestri's theme for Back to the Future. Regardless of what approach you decide to take, start thinking of what thematic material will be needed for this film and create a short list. There's no definitive right answer, other than the one that works for you and your director. So keep an open mind, but make sure to jot down a few reasons to support your decision, so that you can remind yourself of your vision or even explain your decisions as needed. For example, when considering what themes might be important for Danny and the Wild Bunch, you could consider writing motifs for both Miranda and her characters. Another perfectly valid approach would be to write a single primary theme for the entire short film, and just simply develop it as the film progresses. Really, any approach you decide to take could work, so long as you're able to provide simple reasoning behind your decision. However, a word of caution. Take care not to write too many different themes. The whole point of a thematic approach is that each time an idea returns, 
It builds on the emotions and events that the audience has come to associate it with. The entire premise is built on the understanding that the themes will be used multiple times. Danny and the Wild Bunch is a five-minute film, including the opening and ending credits. If you get too ambitious, then you run the risk of watering down the impact of your music by trying to cram in too many different ideas. Now, from here, we can start putting together our music summary, which is a brief list of all the music that you will need to write for the film. Go through each scene that you've marked as needing music, and as you rewatch the scenes, take notes on the following. What SMPTE code should the music start on? What SMPTE code should it end on? What is happening on screen at each of these moments? How long in total is the music cue? And of course, take notes on what the music needs to accomplish. Why are you writing music for this moment in the first place? What purpose does it play in the grand scheme of the story? You can also include tentative names for each cue if you'd like, but that's optional. What isn't optional is to very carefully number each and every cue that you make note of. This will be very important, especially any time you are collaborating with others on a project. You must be able to quickly and efficiently identify each and every cue based on the number that you assign it. These cue numbers should also be the names of the music files that you ultimately share with the music editor. A fairly common practice is to use the following format. The M helps the editors quickly identify the saved file as containing music, rather than, say, dialogue or sound effects. While the Q number identifies where it appears in order of all the other music. For example, let's say that you write a cue for the opening scene of Danny and the Wild Bunch. This cue would be named M1. The very next cue would be M2. However, things aren't always that tidy. Let's say that, for whatever reason, you decide to write the first cue using multiple files in your DAW of choice. This is particularly common for especially long cues. In this case, you can add letters to the end of the cue name. For example, let's say that the first cue you write for your project overlaps from scene one into scene two. You decide that to keep things simple, you'll write the music separately for each scene and just have them play one after the other, as if they were one continuous cue. In this case, you can name each cue as M1A and M1B, letting the editor know that they both belong to the same cue, but that it has been broken up into different files. Let's see how this might look for the first two scenes in Danny and the Wild Bunch. Cue number M1A. Title, opening credits. Sympty in. First hour, zero minutes, zero seconds, zero frames. Sympty out. First hour, zero minutes, 17 seconds, four frames. Mix in, mix out description. In. The film starts. Out. The characters zoom towards the camera, transitioning to the next scene. Length, 17 seconds. Notes. The music will introduce the primary motivic material of the soundtrack, as well as set the tone for the film in general. It should let the audience know what kind of story this is going to be. Cue number M1B. Title, Miranda. Sympty in. First hour, 0 minutes, 17 seconds, 5 frames. Sympty out. First hour, 1 minute, 44 seconds, 17 frames. Mix in. We meet Miranda and she's talking on the phone. Mix out. Danny says, the wild bunch aren't going to like this. Tentative length, 1 minute, 27 seconds. This music will introduce both Miranda and Danny's themes in full for the first time. It will need to help underline the contrast between the two characters and their visions for how the book should be edited. For Danny in particular, it should highlight his bubbly and fun personality, which can be a nice contrast to the darker opening credits. At the end of the queue, it should help hit the foreshadowing of Danny's last words. 
And with that, we have reached the end of another video. After finishing these steps, you will be armed with both your master list of scenes, as well as your music summary of every cue that you will need to write. Next week, we'll take a look at sound palettes and spotting individual scenes for your music. I want to once more thank my amazing patrons, as well as each of you who help show your support for this channel in other ways. Your wonderful comments, messages, and emails mean just an awful lot to me, and I appreciate each and every one of you. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it with anyone else you think might find it useful. And if you're interested in learning more about writing themes for characters, locations, or emotions, consider checking out my book on film scoring, The Musical Storyteller. In the meantime, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.